What's up, everybody? This is Kyle and Q with another episode of Burn the Ship, Louisiana, where we sit down and talk to people about their journeys in pursuit of their passion and taking that vision and putting activation behind it and making it a reality. Uh, we have some really special guests today, uh, Marlon and Nick with World Envision. How y'all doing, fellas? How doing y'all good. Doing? How y'all doing? Big shout out to letting y'all use y'all's uh, uh, podcast setup. This is pretty dope. So yeah, I feel, I feel like episode. this is a world takeover today. That's what we're calling <laughs> okay. it. You know? Okay, yeah. okay. Got the setup. No, we, uh, we, we, uh, we sat down with you guys before, but let's dive right into it, man. How, how did World Envision, where did the concept come from? What, 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 where did this journey all start? Yeah, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you take it away, Ma. All right. Um, so uh, we started this brand in 2010, selling things like candy and iPhone accessories. Um, we was the kids in class that would go to Costco's and Sam's Club and sell the candy in school. I don't know if y'all familiar with Mambo, so we would break the Mambo's down into three in a pack, and we'll sell each pack for a dollar and roughly make like two dollars off one dollar. Um, and then we just noticed that uh, the iPhones had just came around, so. Uh, we figured out how to get on eBay, and we get like all the chargers, the long chargers, like ten foot chargers, the buttons. At one time, the iPhone had like like little circular buttons that you could put on there with characters. Um, they had rechargeable cases, so just like all the accessories for the iPhone. Um, we were selling, having our bag, and then we noticed that um, we were spending all our money on clothes that we made from selling candy and iPhone accessories. We spent it all on clothes, so we decided that we was gonna start our own brand. And we started our own brand by just ordering 12 shirts off of Uber Prince. It was like a, a website where you could customize your t-shirts. Right. Um, and it, it had everything on there for you. And you would just go in there. That, that was the first Photoshop. So Nick would make the designs on Uber Prince and we'd just order them and get them in. But uh, we noticed that the price was like hella high, like 15 to $10 for a shirt that we was trying to sell for 10 to $15. But right. at that time we were selling for 25, 30. And um, we realized that we just Googled, you know, how can we get T-shirts cheaper? And uh, we figured out that we could go to our local screen print shop. So we started to go to our local screen print shop. And I mean, we was, what, 13 and 14 years old, you know, walking in the screen print shop. Like, you know, we starting a brand. Uh, we trying to get some shirts printed. And uh, we had a lot of ups and downs with that, like uh, from, you know, not knowing that the design, like the design file that you send them, how big it needs to be. So we, mm -hmm. we ordered shirts some, one time we was thinking the design was gonna be super, super big. Mm -hmm. And it was literally puny, puny small. <laughs> and like, so we took try to get a refund. Yeah, <laughs> trying to get a refund. It was <laughs> like, we know y'all think it's already done. <laughs> we ain't getting no refund. <laughs> they gave us the little boy treatment. But uh, ultimately <laughs> we, uh, we continued to stick with the brand. We called it a hobby for us at that time. Right. And uh, we, we both were fortunate enough to get scholarships to college. I was mainly an athlete, so I played football and basketball and baseball in high school, and I got a scholarship to Louisiana Tech to play football and went to school for uh, entrepreneurship. And Nick had a top scholarship, and he went to school for graphic design. Originally, general studies until he figured out that he wanted I know to what do I'm graphic to do design, I know and uh, he uh, transferred to uh, the graphic design department. And uh, in school, uh, it was still a hobby for us, but we actually got in a business accelerator program mm. Um, Nick had a, a, a professor, Ty Maggio, mm -hmm. who introduced us to Kat, Ms. Kathy Wyatt in the Enterprise Center. And uh, we showed our idea, and uh, most of the businesses that was in that accelerator were supposed to be you know, leading innovation businesses. Like right. they had charger pads and you know, just a whole bunch of technology stuff, but we had a brand. And uh, Ms. Kathy saw that we was making money, and she was like, well, y'all making money, so it's a business, so you know, come on in and let's see what we could do. And so right before we actually, the first week in that program, we actually took a trip to Atlanta. And uh, one of our friends had just got drafted to the NFL and uh, was going out there and party. And uh, we had a flat tire. So before we could actually go and put all our stuff up, our car got a flat. And I mean, I feel like we was waiting for like three hours on the tow truck. They put the car on the tow, on the, on the tow truck towing it. We sitting in the back like, like little kids. <laughs> So sad, it was getting dark. <laughs> so they took us to like the, every, it, was, it was late at that time, so everything was pretty much closed. So we went to uh, literally a shop where like they had a lamp as a light, 
Um, and he he fixed the flat. Then we got back we got back on the road. So it was already too late for us to go put everything up. So you know what we went to go do? We went to go party. <laughs> and literally when we got back, somebody had a party in our car. So and, we um, we ain't bring nothing home. We ain't bring nothing oh. home. All the all the car doors is open. Oh. Uh, the the the, mm. uh, the trunk was open. And pretty much the whole company was in a car at that time. All our money, game, computer, camera. Like iPad, everything was in the car, so it was all gone. And uh, at that moment, we realized that oh, oh yeah, Nick was crying like a baby, like a real <laughs> baby for sure. But at that a moment, we realized that yeah, it was a that we were one of the at that we had just started to really take the brand serious, I would right. say. And so people started to take notice, and the brand was just starting to really get traction. And everything was suddenly just all gone. And we realized that uh, if we stopped, you know, we had people that was watching us, friends, family, and people that we didn't know that was watching us do this brand. And they was starting to become inspired by what we was doing. And we were just was feeling like if we stopped, then we were really, those people really wouldn't have no hope. If they feel like we the leaders and we the ones that's doing it, right. and then we stopped, it's just no hope for nobody. Right. And so after that, we uh, we came back to the, got, in the, got bought Nick a laptop, you know, uh, got back in the accelerator, and that's when we really figured out our why for our business, and that's, that's when we went all in. Yep, and that's when we that's when we burned our ship. We right. burned our ship. Say, that sounds like we was yeah. getting real close yep. to that that moment, and that's yep. when we went all in. That's and we up. and we realized that uh, we wanted to provide original designs and branded fashion to urban youth who feel stagnant and trapped by what the environment tells them what they can and cannot do, and that's all we literally was living up until that point. We just finally got a chance to put it in words. Right. And um, after that, I mean, we hit the ground running. We started to really read books, listen to podcasts, um, get mentor, seek mentorship, right. uh, really work on our craft as uh, entrepreneurs. I mean, we didn't know anything about taxes, profit and loss, cost of goods, marketing, team building. It, we just thought that if you had a product, you posted it, you you know, you popped up from here and there, that it was a business. Right. But we didn't know what it really took to take it to the next level. And now we was given these resources and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And um, do you want to finish like once we graduated? Yeah, uh, like, yeah once we graduated, um, we been, we was always telling our friends that like, this, this is what we're going to do. Everybody wanted Marlon to go to the league. Ma was like, man, I'm about to do the business. Everybody was looking at him as like, nah, bro, go to the league. I was like, Either one will be successful at it if you go all in. Um, so from there, I think right after college, we instantly just went into the business. Our first biggest pop-up shop was like Essence Fest. Well, um, we did like 18,000 in the first weekend. Got our first paycheck ever, mm. $500 every, what, two weeks? Yep. We was getting $1,000 a month. So we was getting, Balling. We was getting <laughs> paid, we was, we was we was rich. Right. Um, so basically from there, uh, once we started paying ourselves, we took it extremely more serious. Um, Cause we was like, you know, damn, we could pay ourselves from our own business. Uh, we never knew that that was like possible to do. So once we did that, we kept doing pop-up shops. Um, we started getting online. And on from there, man, it was literally up from there. We started to learn social media more. Um, I, remember we, I remember we was struggling to get the 10,000 followers talking about, can't we do get a 10, we thought we was gonna blow up at, at, at the 10,000 followers, but really we seen that it was just gonna be a continuous growth and you gotta sure. just keep leveling up. Even when you hit one milestone, it's gonna be plenty more right after that. So uh, from there, like, it just, it just went, it just went crazy as we continue to just work at it. Yep. You uh, got those kiosks. Got the two kiosks, three. got three kiosks really, um, one in Baton Rouge, two in New Orleans. Uh, I mean, COVID hit, we wound up pulling out the kiosks after a while after we seen like, we really could just go all, online with taking care of the, you know, the, uh, the physical store. So after that, we started to just uh, dive into just more marketing, getting on social media, just always at play, started a YouTube channel, giving game, showing our, 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 our you know, from, from where we started. And uh, I mean, it's been enough from enough. And now we, we in our warehouse, uh, we we leasing our fifteen thousand square foot. Twenty. Well, twenty. Got a couple of office spaces. Got another business that we trying to get on our a brand startup. Um, but other than that, uh, we just every day we working at it, and um, we just we just trying to grow it even bigger than this. Yep. I kind of want to. You, you made a uh, a point that something that really caught my attention was you know a lot of people we talk about this all the time is I think <clears throat> I think people 
significantly undervalue what collaboration can do versus looking at, you know, you guys, for example, looking at another co- clothing brand as a competitor. Well, no, we, there's, there's plenty for everybody to eat. Why can't we just collaborate? And I saw you guys starting to promote other clothing brands. Like, that's just, that's not very common. Uh, but I, wanna, I want you all to kind of touch on that. Like, like, how did y'all see like a significant increase, whether it be in sales or engagement, when y'all started actually collaborating with other brands like that? I thought that was super dope. Um, I, I say, uh, like, uh, you know, as, as you start and um, as you first become like an entrepreneur and a business owner, you're going to always think that, like, oh, it's competition. Sure. Like, because you don't really see the market as, like, as abundance. You see it, like, small. You see it, like, as something that's small. But when you start to think super, super big, mm-hmm. it's like, it's so many people out there. And when, when, we re- when we really look at it, we say it all the time. It ain't nobody in that space that's doing, you know, like, I don't really feel like it's that many brands that's in the space that we're in that's really doing it at a, at a, at a big time, like, level. So whenever we find those people, like, we definitely like to collaborate sure. with anybody that's doing a brand so we can all pull each other up. Because at the end of the day, like, Nike, as, as Nike and Adidas collab, or, or, or Nike and Off-White collab, Adidas and Off-White collab, you know what I mean? And they just make those brands, like, just bigger, so it's just like... We could do. We could be doing the same thing with just uh, us being in a smaller market. We could all collab with each other and can still eat. And there's so many people out there. It's crazy. It's like, is a is a is an endless amount of people out there that are buy our product and their product. 100%. It just make everything. Um, I think that it that that it give value to both brands because you could tap into their audience and they could tap into your audience, and that's what ultimately um, build organic growth. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mentioned uh, Louisiana Tech, and I think it's really innovative of them to start with their entrepreneur program. So when I was there, they had just started launching it. So by the time y'all came, you know, the, the enterprise building was up and things were rolling. Who some of the mentors that had been the most crucial for y'all in just development and learning? Yeah, I just go back. Miss um, Kathy Wyatt, honestly, I mean, she done been there from working with projections and putting together spreadsheets and introducing us to accountants and just uh, uh, putting out, getting our mindset to understand business and asking us those tough questions right? mm-hmm. that we may not be able to, that we might can't think of when, when you're in it. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I say that, I say that she was one of the people that really kept it just super, super real, um, no matter, like she kept it super business, like this is what we gotta do to make the business better. And not just like, the, she don't want to tell us because like we are gonna feel a certain way about it, and I feel like oh, what she learned about us is when we did identify the things that we needed to tackle to grow the business, we did it a hundred percent. Once we figured that thing out, once we noticed that okay, this we need to work on, we worked on it. Like right. and that's what ultimately made the business get to a, where it is here. I feel like when we first met her, like they was thinking if they should put us in the business accelerator program because it was like y'all like it's a clothing brand. It's not nothing that's gonna change the world. But then we was making a little bit of money, like, you know, maybe like a couple hundred dollars here and there. So she was like, all right, y'all making money. So obviously it's something that people like and y'all just have to tap more into that. Right. Uh, I feel like that's what she ultimately was saying. She probably didn't say those exact words, but um, that's how it went. And then from there, uh, I mean, it's crazy to just see how we started and to so, where we are right now. Like our goal when we first ended the program, we were saying, saying we were just going to be happy with selling 300 to 500 shirts. A, a month, yeah. I feel like that's like when we left the program. Like mm-hmm. when we put our roadmap out that we was gonna open up a kiosk in Monroe. We ended up going back to New Orleans, but we was gonna open that kiosk in Monroe, and we just was like three to five hundred shirts. Yeah, we didn't really yeah. know what we, like how we was gonna do it. We didn't know how like literally how to get to this point. We just was trying stuff. We we really was like, all right, we gonna have goals. We had goals that was super super small goals, but was big at the time. But like. Um, we didn't know how we was going to do it. We just put that out there and we just did things that we thought was going to get us there and it really did. Right. Yeah. Well, some of the, the big issues you see with small companies is with growth is working in the business versus working on the business. So it sounds like Kathy was was helping y'all with working on the business and, and not getting too buried in actually, you know, being printing the shirt, right? But you're focused on, on the exterior, how to grow the business. And I think that's a huge thing because I've seen too many companies, you know, you, you'll see them there. They have a really great product, but they just can't get over that hump. But, the you know, the CEO is over there too involved in the day-to-day instead of focused on, you know, growing the company. So I think I, I'm 
that's real uh, impressive for Tech to have that kind of leadership. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Louisiana Tech. Mm-hmm. Shout out Alex to Louisiana out. Tech. And I want to make a point too because you you said uh, you know when they were kind of vetting through, it was like oh. We, you, know, you don't have like a new up and coming technology. I think it's important for people to understand you don't have to have, you know, some new, you know, just game changing technology or whatever to start a business. I mean, there's a plethora of clothing brands, you know what I mean? Actually, all of us are in the same boat. I mean, there's a marketing company, right? There's a bunch of them out there. I, you know, we started Easy Rider, Easy Deliver. Well, Uber, Uber East, Grub Up, DoorDash, Postman. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of small ones like that too, you know. So right. there's, there's a reason why though people don't do it, right? Because there's, it's, they just that, think it's it, totally captured. I mean, it's, well, well, isn't like a laundromat business is probably profitable if they got a whole bunch of them right, out here, right. Right. exactly. You know, like they, it, the reason why they, nobody not doing it because nobody was been able to do it successfully or or profit from it, correct? Because it's it's just so new, so it's easier to get in the business, like we said, like a laundromat, when they got so much data and everything is just already, like you could find people that's running those businesses successfully, sure. then let's just say trying to create, you know, it may be tough to create a brand new, you know, shoe, like literally shoe, maybe where it's like never, you know, watered or hit it or anything. Right. It's just, to, and then make it successful, popular, where everybody wearing it. Right. Because it's just so new, and if and if the market wanted that, it would already be there. Right. I feel like. But it goes back to y'all, with, even with your story and, mm-hmm. and 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 us is is you have to have a vision, right? And you have to have passion behind it. Because like anybody can just make a clothing brand, but it's the story and the vision and the passion behind it that's the driver, and that's what people are ultimately mm-hmm. buying into, not just I'm gonna buy another T-shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it, mm-hmm. it feels like it's a representation of themselves, so they embody that, and that's what they're buying into. And that's how you can stand out in the market of what people think is overcrowded, like just like what you're saying, like a podcast, yeah. like uh, like what you were saying about the uh, delivery company. Like uh, that's what's gonna make your brand stand out in 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 you know between the competitors is why you doing what you're doing. Right. Like yep. the the message, whatever. Why are you in the space? You could obviously do the same thing, but why are you in the space? And right. how is it gonna um, help or, or do the things that you see that's needed to be done? Correct. And and that's the stuff that you create right. because at the end of the day, what we saying is. A laundromat business could be the most boringest thing ever, <laughs> but you can bring a brand around it sure, that right. makes people feel a certain type of way about that laundromat. And that's how you explode in that market. market. And, yeah, and that's right. how you explode in that market. Mm-hmm. Getting creative with it. Yeah, yeah, create that environment, you know what I mean, yeah. that, that is a draw versus what the other person's doing. We always say it's like there, there's a what and the how and then the why, right? And the why's got to come first, and that sure. drives a what and the how, you know. Sure. The golden circle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, y'all, y'all's story fully embodies a man, 14 years old with the mentality of getting out there and hustling. I, I commend you guys for, I know at 14, I was not, I was thinking about where I was gonna go play, you know, backyard baseball. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about hustling like that. So I, you know, I commend, y'all story is super inspiring. So I, I appreciate y'all taking some time to, you know, share and and, and uh, hopefully, you know, provide some inspiration. I know I get inspired talking to you guys. So uh, I, know, I know people that listen to this will, will um, you know, be able to take a couple of, uh, and us too. I mean, we want to have fun just like everybody else. I mean, when we was 14, 15, like we said, it was a hobby. Sure. So it was just something that we wanted to do to just have extra money on us because yeah. we were skateboarding. We wanted to buy McDonald's. Right. And I mean, if you ain't had, you gonna have a, I mean, you needed a couple, we used to get a hot and spicy and a fry. So you at least needed $3 for right. sure. Yeah. And we used to catch the bus. So a lot of people didn't catch the bus, so we needed bus fare. So at the end of the day, like the things that we were selling was just for us to maintain how we was like living, honestly. Right. Like, the things that we needed going, like we, we really didn't ask our parents for much because they already was doing what they was, they was doing the best that they could do. And if we wanted extra, we figured we found, we figured out that like we had to go get, we had to go do that ourselves. Right. So, and that, that's the best lesson I honestly think we learned because now a lot of kids are just give, it's just given to them. You know, I want a new pair of shoes right. here. Right. You know, it, it's not like, Actually, them having to figure out how to how to work for that, and earn it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, you're spot on. I, I like what Shaq said. That's the last thing I'm gonna leave, leave it. There. I like what Shaq said. How he, he was like he gonna spend all his money, <laughs> he ain't giving it to none of his kids. Yeah. Like, and I think, I mean, I think he gonna give some money to his sure. kids. But really, is is about um, 
him trying to get them to f- figure it out on their own, other yeah. than him just giving it away to them. Yeah, it's understand. that work and reward yeah. versus yeah. just reward with no reason, you know? Yeah. So y'all do a lot of uh, educational stuff, right? We talked about that. So um, I want y'all to talk about what y'all have coming up because there's a lot of people that say they give game to everybody and in, in, in that space. Talk about what y'all have coming on in that ecosystem, that entrepreneurial ecosystem, what y'all are contributing and, and talk about that. Oh, um, I go. So, all right, we got a a, a lot of things. So, if y- y- if y'all ready, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? <laughs> all right. So, first, we it's got our active paper. venture vision, um, HBCU tour that we're gonna be going on right after Easter. Uh, it's gonna kick off at Elkhorn on the twenty first, and it's gonna end at TCU on the twenty seventh. So, we'll be at Elkhorn, Mississippi Valley. Uh, Prairie View, TCU, and Lamar University. TSU. Uh, TSU. T- TSU, I'm sorry, <laughs> TSU, all in that one, all in what about a, a six day period. And then we also do our, we got our own podcast, the Activate Your Vision podcast. And uh, two more things, we have we have done live classes to where uh, we have been teaching the seven steps to build a seven figure business live. Our last class, we partnered with Art of Homage and we had over 150 people there wow. for a three day live class. Nice. And um, we actually just released our second ebook, which is the se- the seven steps to build a seven figure empire, and that's a digital product that comes with a, a, a ebook. It comes with eleven, I want to say eleven videos mm-hmm. um, that it helps explain the book, and also it comes with a bonus video that's about fifty minutes that's going to show you a live drop that we did. And we ended up doing about 30,000 in 30 minutes. And I think we ended the day with like 70, 80K wow. um, during that. And we went over the seven steps to grow a seven figure business mm-hmm. at a conference. Mm-hmm. So they get all that package in that one digital product. Um, so yeah, we've been working on a lot of things to keep giving back, keep giving game, keep, because we realized was the, the accelerator helped us out. Right. And the accelerator gave us a guide, it gave us instructions, it, you know, put us in the, the mindset. It starts with the mindset. Yep. So what we want to do is be able to continue to talk about these things to put you in the mindset and put you in, um, put you in a space of awareness to be the environment. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where, uh, if somebody wanted to, to tap into those resources, yeah. Just no. go down with YouTube. And go down with YouTube, one. Go down That's the first thing. The uh, second thing is www.activateyourvsn.com. All right, so that's how you're gonna be able to get to the products. The, you'll you get want. to the YouTube, and you'll get to all the digital product, the digital products that cool. we have. We'll, also, we'll definitely throw it's the worldly digital world. Yeah, yeah, we'll throw all those links in there just in case uh, nobody had their pen and paper handy. But, See less, uh, right? Uh, man, thank y'all again, again sitting here in, in y'all's podcast room. I've always been a fan of it since I. I saw it coming into fruition. Appreciate y'all taking the time to chop it up. Can we give a couple of shout outs? Absolutely. Hey, shout out the moms. Shout out the moms. Shout out the pops. Shout out the pops. Who else you got? And shout out to the Whirly team. Shout out to the Whirly team. Shout Shout out to to Aria. Shout out to Ariel. Shout out to LaMica. Hey. Shout out, uh, shout out to the whole world squad. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all for no this. No problem. Hey, we, look, I always it. said I want to take over the world, so it feels like at least one <laughs> I got to do it, you know? So. Hey, also, shout out to Level 1. Hey, right. hey. <laughs> it's a plug. Right. Looking Good. for that sponsorship. Yeah, right. that's when the beat drop, too. I guess that's when the beat drop. <laughs> Thank y'all. We'll catch y'all on the flip side.